All right, so before I do these examples, I want to explain something here that I wrote at the top. So we have learned from our other units that if I give you something like this, x squared equals something, we could make a statement that the solution could have been a 4 for x or a negative 4. Both of those would have worked. However, this is not the same as when we have a statement that says, what is the square root of 16? So if I say, what's the square root of 16? That is just 4. And there's an implied positive sign. It's one of those math things that if I have an x, it's really a 1x, but I don't need to write that. So that's one of those things in math that it's implied that it's there. Okay, so if there's nothing in front, it means the positive of that root. If I had it looking like this, which is the negative of this root, then that would be a negative 4. Okay, then this is also different. What's the square root of negative 16? Well, that doesn't work at all. Okay, so those three things are different. Root of 16, root, negative root of 16, and root of negative 16. All right, so solving equations, what we're gonna be trying to do, first of all, our thought process is, how can I get the radical alone? Okay, so there's a four, a seven, and a three. I need to remove all three parts. What am I gonna get rid of first? The four, the seven, or the three? Four, the seven, or the three? What will I have to attack first in the algebra? I think I'm gonna have to times by three. That's my first maneuver. Okay, now what? The four or the seven? What do you want to go with next? We're just trying to isolate, so what do you want to get rid of? The seven. And divide. So that's the first goal is to get the radical alone. And now that I have the radical alone, how do I get rid of that radical? What's the opposite math of square rooting? Squaring, but in algebra, if you do something to one side, you gotta do it to the other. So the square root and square, that cancels and I get x equals 25. Okay, number two, I want to get the radical alone, so I'm going to times by five. Okay, here is a big idea here. Some of you might have had the instinct to minus one. You cannot do that. Because it's under the root, you can't just unglue it like that. It's stuck under the root, so it can't be pulled away right now individually. So once you have the radical alone, we're gonna square. We can't do anything with those numbers because they're stuck underneath that square root. All right, so four X plus one, I want to say this is 625, if anybody's maybe already done it. And now I can move that one out of there because it's unglued from that radical sign. Number three, 
So I want the radical alone. I want the radical alone, so I'm going to minus 9. Okay, we talked about this already. What do I know? What's implied right here? There's really a positive sign there. So can the positive of this root be a negative four? Is that ever gonna work for us? No, that's not gonna work for us. So there's no solution. We cannot end up getting that radical, the positive radical to be a negative four, it won't work. Okay, number four. So the radical is alone, so I'm going to square. So I can square both sides. Now that cancels. So I get a 3x plus 1 and a 4x minus 7. And now it's all just the algebra steps of collect x. So what am I going to get rid of? I think I'm going to want to minus the smaller one. And then I'm going to want to add 7. Okay, what's actually important, I didn't do it on these first two because I kind of could see it was working. I think on this one I would like to check. Okay, ready? If I plug 8 in, so if I plug 8 in, 3 times 8 plus 1, 4 times 8 minus 7, if I were to plug 8 in to the top, Three times eight is what? 24 plus one. So the root of 25. And four times eight, so that's 32 minus seven. Okay, that looks like it's gonna work out. Root 25 will equal root 25. Okay, last one. So I would like the radical alone. That's the first instinct. Get the radical alone. So I'm going to want a minus 2. Okay, I have sometimes seen some algebra mistakes on this side. There's an x and there's a subtract 2. Can I put those two units together? No, I can't, okay? I often get people who are trying to put them together, but it doesn't work. So x minus 2. I can't put them together. They're not like each other. Now, I have this, the root alone, so I'm going to square it, which means I'm going to square this side, but here's the big idea. I can't just square each thing, I have to square that as a unit. Do you understand my language? I'm not squaring each thing, I'm squaring that unit. Which will look like this. When you square something, does that make sense? It gets repeated twice. Okay, so there's a 100% chance that something like this is on the test. Is why I put a star there. And that's the spot where people are tending to make mistakes, the squaring part. Okay, so on this side, it's nice and easy. That cancels. When I square this, 
What are you going to do to it? You're going to have to do a whole foil on it. So x squared is first. Minus 2x out. Minus 2x in. And positive 4. Okay, grade 11, equation solving tactics that we've learned. What do we first instinct do as soon as we see that there's been x squared and x's? Zero. You got to zero it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is think x squared's the boss. So I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to minus a 5x. And I'm going to minus a 14 because I need a 0. Okay, so now finalize your trinomial because the, all the x's can go together. Did you get a minus 9x out of all those? <clears throat> and the 4 subtract 14, those could be put together. Alright, so now that it looks like this, our next instinct should be try to factor. Multiplying to 10. So 10 times 1. I need a negative 9 out of it. So x equals 10, x equals negative 1. Okay, especially on this one though, I'm going to have to check. Because I got two answers, we better check them both out. Okay, so the original statement is 5x plus 14 plus 2 equals x. So I take the original and I replace x with 10 to see if it works. Okay, so this is... 50 plus 14, so 64, then that would be 8 plus 2 equaling 10, yeah, that answer is good, that's working. Now let's plug the negative 1 in, so 5 negative 1 plus 14 plus 2 equals negative 1. So replace x, replace the x, okay here we go, negative 5 plus 14, that all ends up being 9. 3. Uh, this is not working. That's not going to work out. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to eliminate this answer now because it did not work. So I'm going to cross it off. Okay, I'm on page six. Oh, I see a bad spacing on your one question there. I'm sorry, for number 11 it kind of didn't work how I wanted it to there. Okay. I'm just going to start number 13 with you. On number 13, my first instinct would be to square both sides.
Okay, I will show you the long looking way to do it and then you don't need to do it on the other side. So when I square it, that would be the long way this would look. Okay, what do we know about multiplying radicals? We always do whole number, whole numbers, radical, radicals, right? We always put them together. So what's the whole number this would come out to be in the front? Four. And what happens when you do a radical times another radical when they're the same radical? Now they just lose their radical. Do you remember that? Because we did something like this. The square root of 6 times the square root of 6. What does it turn into? Root 36, which turns into a 6. They lose their radical when you square them, right? Okay, did you notice how I put brackets around that? That was kind of important to put brackets on because of that. You're going to have to, to do that. Okay. I'm going to pause and I'm going to, you're going to go back and you're going to finish that one. I just wanted to make sure you understood that this front number also has to change when you square it. That was a big idea there. Okay. I'm going to pick number 16 to do with you. Oh, actually number 14, I'm not going to do it, but what's a, what do you think you're going to do here? There's two radical signs. We haven't seen that before. What do you think you're going to do? Square it to get rid of one and then square it again. Okay. You're going to have to square it twice. Okay. Ready? I am going to square. So I'm going to take this side and square it. I'm going to take this side and square it. All right, this side is nice and easy because there was a square root and a square. So they're gone. On the right hand side, it does not look that easy. So I'm going to write it out the long way. If I square something, if I square something, it really would look like that. Okay, we ready? Here we go. First times first. Out front, we're going to have a 9. What happens when you have the root x, root x? The root would just disappear and cancel, right? So 9x. Outsides, so in front, I'm going to have a minus 3. Radical, I can times these together, so the radical will be 2x. You see that piece? Negative 3 root 2x. The insides, so the front will be negative 3 root 2x again. And the last, okay, first of all, let's just say negative, negative makes plus. And what happens? The root two, root two. There's a root two and another root two, so it will just be a two. Okay, I'm going to put these two together because they're like each other. So negative 6 root 2x.
and now I'm going to move the other stuff. So I'm going to be minusing a 9x and I'm going to be minusing a 2. still going. Um, simplifying, I'm going to divide by negative 6. That's my next instinct. Alright, at this point, this is where I square. I have to square again. We already squared once, but we got to square again because we still have a radical in there. So square, Alright, what do we do when we have an equation involving x squareds and x's? Every time we see x squareds and x's, we have to, what's the rule? We have to zero it out. <clears throat> x squareds the boss. I'm going to try to factor. Do you recognize how to factor that? Because it's a style that we know. It's not a trinomial style. Which of the styles is that one? GCF. Okay, so I'm getting an x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay, so I can check my answers by plugging it in. So if I plug in a zero, this would be gone and I would get root two. If I plug in a zero, this would be gone and this would be a negative root two. So root two cannot, doesn't equal negative root two. So zero doesn't work. When I plug in a 3 or a 2, this makes root 8, and 3 root 2 minus 1 root 2, you can check on your calculator, it would work, or you can put it back to an entire radical, which you're probably just going to be on your calculator doing it anyway, so just checking on your calculator that that came out. Okay, number 17, we're going to do that one yet too. Okay, I feel like if I try to square this, it would get really messy. So I think I'm going to move that one over. So I moved that to that side. Okay, now I'm going to try to square and see if I can get at least this one to cancel. So I'm going to square, I'm going to square. The left hand side is nice and easy, that cancels. The right hand side, I'm going to have to do this because I'm squaring a unit again. I'm not just squaring a few things, I'm squaring a unit. Okay, here we go, foil, foil, foil. First times first makes one. Mm 
the outsides make negative 1 of that root. The insides make negative 1 of that root. And the last last, so I have a negative negative, so it will be a positive. And what happens when you have the same root times the same root? The root part just disappears. Okay, I'm going to put a few things together on this side. I'm going to put a 1 plus a 1. So 2. I can put those radicals together so they're the same. So now I have minus 2 of those radicals. Plus an x. Okay, now what? Am I getting somewhere? I'm going to try to get that radical alone. So I'm going to minus 2 and a minus an x. Alright, so I just have that negative 2 root x plus 1 now. Oh, this is a hard one. We're going to have a few more steps yet. Okay, now I'm going to square again because I have to get rid of that root. So I'm going to square this side and square this side. Okay, so this is teaching you a lot about your algebra steps and equation strategies. So when I square this side, I get x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. When I square that side, now here we go. What happens when this number in front gets squared? A 4. What happens when the radical gets squared? The radical disappears. All right, we're almost there. Now we're recognizing that we zero something out. So I'm going to minus 4x and minus 4. Okay, so x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so it factors with the 3 and a 1. And then I'm going to check these two answers. And I don't think 3 works, because if I plug in 3, I get 6 plus 3 is 9. So the root of 9 is 3. And then in here, I get 3 plus 1, 4. The root of 4 is 2. 3 plus 2, that's not 1. So that one doesn't work. 
And then I've, I'm gonna do the same idea with the negative one plugged in. Okay, and then my algebra on that one does work. It ends up equaling each other.